Hello, it's Scott Manley here. Last night, China's space program took a massive step forward with the launch of their first module of their forthcoming modular space station. This took off from uh, Wenchang uh, Spacecraft Launch Facility on Hainan Island. It lifted off on a Long March 5B rocket. This is, I believe it's the largest rocket that China has right now. It is a cryogenically fueled rocket, which has four uh, boosters around the outside, burning RP-1 and and liquid oxygen that gives them the high thrust to get them off the pad and then the core is liquid hydrogen and oxygen and this was able to carry the 20 ton module all the way into orbit without any further staging so that core stage where the engines were lit on the ground made it all the way to orbit and we don't see that very often like the last spacecraft that really did that was uh, the space shuttle right it used to be all the rage of course back in the 60s or 50s when they weren't sure that they could actually light rocket engines in flight but yeah obviously a great uh, step forward for them to get this into space so this core is going to be part of a multi-module space station. There's at least two other modules which will be coming in the future. But before those arrive, we're going to get cargo and crew delivered. So uh, it launched into a 42 degree orbit because although the initial launch site, which was Wenchang Island, is about 20 degrees from the equator, the crew launch facilities is a Jiquan spaceport and that launches on the Long March 2F. That is the current uh, launch vehicle for the Shenzhou. So they had to launch it to the southeast so that when it hit orbit, it had like a 42 degree inclination. And that way it can be reached from these two major Chinese launch facilities. So in the next, so right now it was put into orbit. It's currently raising its orbit into a circularized orbit. The booster is going to decay over the coming weeks. And then we're going to see it send up a cargo spacecraft. So the cargo spacecraft is the, the Tianzhu, and that launch is also from Wenchang, and that is actually based on their smaller space stations. So China has previously flown two space stations, Tiangong 1 and 2, and these were very small space stations. Their, their launch mass was something about 10 tons, which is you know, comparable to that of a Dragon or a Starliner, albeit that Dragon and Starliner are optimized to keep crew alive for re-entry, whereas this was just this, these stations are just optimized to provide space for the crew to do their science and experiments and uh, you know get experience in space. So the first module of the this new space station, which actually I believe may be called Tiangong when it's completely assembled, the, the module itself is called Tianhe. I hope my pronunciation isn't too bad. I know it's very hard to do Mandarin properly, but I'm going to endeavor because you, you've got to respect this. So yeah, the core module, I believe is pretty much a licensed copy or derivative of the Russian Soviet DOS, DOS design, which is what Salyut 1 and onwards were based on. There's these modules which have a very similar design. They were... Uh, used in many of the Russian stations. It was the core module of the Mir space station and the Zvezda service module on the International Space Station is also an example of this design. So Tianhe is going to include multiple docking ports. It has five docking ports. It includes power. It has propulsion so it can maintain orbit. It has all the avionics and sensors and everything it needs to fly. And it has room for some equipment racks, has life support. So it will be able to support crew um, until the, the other modules arrive. So yeah, we're gonna see a, a Tianzhe uh, dock with it. And then in June, we're gonna see a launch from Jiquan, which will have a, a crew of three, I believe, on a Shenzhou. And that will go to the station and dock to the Nadir port and then they'll start, you know, doing science in space. I mean, they'll probably be doing more engineering preparing it. Now, it is interesting that this module, although it was based on a design that was, was supposed to be flown on the Proton rocket, the Long March 5 has a wider fairing. So there's a lot of stuff that's attached on the surface that makes it sort of bulkier inside the fairing. When... Uh, the Russian modules went up to the space station. They did have to do a lot of EVAs to attach stuff that couldn't fit because it had to fit inside the fairings. Whereas there's a bunch of stuff here that's already there, already deployed, which I think will simplify some of their operations. It includes a robotic manipulator arm as well. 
And um, that will be essential when the modules come later on. So the, the core module is about 20 tons. The Sometime next year, there are two science modules called Wengtian and, and Mengjian. I, again, pronunciation question. Now, there are five docking ports. There's the fore and aft, there's port and starboard, and there's a nadir port on the bottom. And by the way, on the top side where you might think there's a docking port, that is where the hatch is for the airlock. So if they need to do EVAs, they will be using that. But only the port and starboard docking adapters don't have the navigational and communications gear that will be needed for the automated docking of the new modules. So those are designed to come in and dock to the forward port and then the crew will use the manipulator arm to undock them and shift them around to the port or starboard. And when all three modules are together in space, I think the space station will have a mass of about 60 tons. Although based on quotes I've heard, it's not clear if that includes the mass of, of Shenzhou as well. I, I suspect that the whole thing is probably 20 ton per module. That would make most sense given the capabilities of the Long March. So look, this is going to be a 60 ton space station, making it uh, the fourth largest space station ever built after Mir or oh, International Space Station and Skylab. But it is going to be six times larger than what China has previously flown. And it is open to international partners. They're already fly they've already announced experiments that are going to fly from many European nations. Uh, only the US has this, you know, political a block that stops the US from working with any Chinese space program, whereas other countries don't have this and they're uh, already coming up with plans. One thing that, however, in the last few weeks, of course, again, Russia was making a lot of noise about abandoning the International Space Station, perhaps working with the Chinese. That was very something they very specifically said. And according to Anatoly Zuck, they actually made some approaches to China to say, can you change the inclination of your space station? Because 42 degrees is fine for China to get there. It's fine for the US to get there, but it's too far south for any of the Russian launch facilities. Baikonur is 45 degrees north, but if you remember, it has to launch slightly to the northeast to avoid fly overflying China. Now, sure, I guess if they were working with China, they might get permission, but I, I don't think that's going to happen because that would require like a three degree dogleg maneuver, which is probably beyond what Soyuz will manage. And I don't think they're planning to bring any of the, the new spacecraft to Baikonur. Yeah, um, not sure how that works out, but yeah, it's uh, obviously going to be uh, interesting to watch. Now, so right now it's on this 42 degree orbit, which brings it over it doesn't it won't fly over Britain you've be able to see it if you're in the south of Europe um you'll be able to see it over most of the US I'm not I think Canada's too far south and uh, right now if you look up in the morning that's the time to see it uh, that's the time if you're this far north in the south you'll see it during the um in the evening so the launch of the Chinese space station now means that we are going to be seeing the return of Chinese astronauts to orbit, or taikonauts as some people like to call them. And uh, right now we have 11 people on the International Space Station, which is a high for a very long time. But the record of people simultaneously in space is 13, which was like back in 2009, where we had a space shuttle with seven and two fully loaded Soyuz crews, which was six. So. It's possible later this year we will see more people in space than we've ever seen before. We'll possibly have three people on uh, the Chinese space station and it's possible we'll have two uh, Dragon spacecraft and maybe one or two Soyuz. Now, it could be that we have two Dragon spacecraft docked to the space station, but in September, Inspiration4 will be flying their crew of four on their own unique orbit while... Crew 2 is still docked to the space station. Crew 3 are going up, I believe, in October. So that's another option. So I think this year we're going to break the number, record on the number of humans simultaneously in space. And also we're going to have for, uh, you know, two space stations occupied at the same time, which, you know, this is the sci-fi future we want, right? We want to have lots of people working in space stations and doing things.
It's also worth pointing out that the Chinese station is being built using docking adapters, which are derived from the International Docking System Standard, which is itself largely compatible with the APAS, the Androgynous Peripheral Attachment System. And this means that mechanically, the docking systems on Dragon and Starliner are broadly similar and possibly compatible with those on the Chinese station. Now, that's not going to happen for political reasons right now, but you never know. In the future, maybe there's some way to bring China's work into the international community in a way that the US is happy, and we get this glorious future of humanity working in space together and you know, solving all our problems. That's the future I want. So I'm going to say, you know, congratulations to China on getting your first module into space. I hope that uh, things go well, and I hope that we can, in fact, figure out how to work together in space. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.